Next up in our Lion Legends series, we're catching up with two of the most decorated players of all time from UNA, two former volleyball players that were on campus from 1996 to 1999. They were part of a UNA volleyball program that won four Gulf South Conference championships, making four trips to the NCAA tournament. Career records of 156 and 22 over those four years. They combined for over 4,000 kills in their collective careers at UNA. It's great to be joined by former Lion legends Rachel Price Bell and Rhonda Price Brindley. Thank you guys for taking the time to catch up with us. And let's just open up with a, an update for UNA fans on where you guys are located now and, and what you're doing. And Rachel, we'll start with you. All right, um, I'm actually back in Indiana, a little further south than where I grew up, but uh, uh, in West Lafayette near Purdue. Um, I'm working at Cook Research Incorporated, which is a great, it's a medical device company, um, and working in the clinical division there. And Rhonda, we'll go over to you now and let you update UNA fans. I'm, I'm also back in Indy, um, Indiana. I actually live in a northeast suburb of Indianapolis called Fishers, and I work at Hancock Regional Hospital, which is a uh, kind of smaller hospital out east of Indy. Um, I'm an anesthesiologist there, which I have been for 12 years, although we just moved back from Fort Wayne to Indianapolis. Enjoying it. <laughs> So you guys are a part of some outstanding teams at UNA, so many career records. We're going to jump into all of that. But first off, we just like to ask people, as you reflect back on your time at UNA, just what stands out and what makes it so special? So UNA, I think for me at least, um, one of the, this is probably how everybody would answer, but I think, I think the, the team that we played with, um, having them be our best friends and be able to, being able to travel with them and play with them, um, I mean, there's lots and lots of memories there. Um, I think, uh, you know, from a campus perspective, I, it's still cool to be able to say that we always have had and still have a, you know, a lion as our mascot, <laughs> UNA. Um, so that's, that's also been pretty memorable. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Friends and family, um, we still have really good friends there, actually. Asia, one of our um, teammates, is actually godmother to one of my kids, and we randomly see our uh, friends still, you know, every couple of years. We actually did a Zoom call, Zoom call over the uh, coronavirus with everybody. It was fun, <laughs> and um, I met my husband there. So <laughs> that's all been that's that is memorable. And friends, <laughs> that's, that is important. Yeah. <laughs> So let's jump down memory lane and talk about some of your time at UNA. But first off, you two are twins. You grew up in Indiana, outstanding athletically and in the classroom. What was it like growing up together and pushing each other both on the playing field, the court, if you will, and in the classroom? Well, I can say that I, I, I feel like I was always kind of not quite as good as her. Like she was, you know, she was salutatory and I was made the top 10 <laughs> and but but honestly we both were it was just fun I we were never we were competitive but never like bad competitive it was always actually very helpful we had a good time with each other and frankly she was my best friend still is my best friend so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I'd agree um uh you know she was always a study partner and a pepper partner <laughs> um, so lifelong. It was, it was, um, I, I'd say it was really nice growing up with her because I never had to do new things alone. I always got to do them together. Just like the Zoom call, I get to do it with her. Wow. Just <laughs> um, so that's, that's been a, a cool part. And, and like Rhonda said, um, the competition, it was, it was good competition. It helped, I think, probably make us better made us better in all areas that we, um, you know, that we were in, um, whether it was academically or sports related or in other areas as well, like board games. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> your recruitment to UNA, how do you go from Indiana to playing college volleyball at UNA? What was that like? You want to tell them, sir? Uh, sure. So um, our volleyball coach, Amy Beckham, in, um, at 
at Maryville High School. Uh, she knew Matt and Jeff, who were at, where were they at? Wayne State. Wayne State. Wayne State. Um, and <clears throat> so they had just moved down to University of North Alabama. Um, but through that connection, she was able to get us a tryout. Um, so we, we came down and um, tried out, really liked Matt and Jeff, um, really liked the campus, really liked, um, you know, what we saw at UNA. And so, and they liked us too, which was great. <laughs> um, so we decided to go there. So the year before you guys arrived on campus, UNA went 21 and 20. Matt Peck was entering his second year, the freshman year that you guys arrived on campus. You guys would start a run of four straight Gulf South Conference championships. But when you guys first arrived on campus, what were the early days like with practice and bonding with so many newcomers on that team? Well, it was really fun. We actually had, um, we had six freshmen. And were there four um, people from other schools? So it was a very new team. Um, Matt and Jeff really worked on getting a lot more people to there. And I, I, I understand that it was – they did not uh, lay off on us. <laughs> they made sure we were in very, very good shape, which probably actually played into some of that. We have, I'm sure we won a couple of fifth game, <laughs> five or the fifth game in several planes just because we were in better shape. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, d I will say that it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, just the volleyball piece of it, because we'd not necessarily you know, done three-a-day practices with that level of volleyball at the time. And so... Um, I distinctly remember being very sore after the first day, um, which I was our birthday. The next was day. our birthday. The first day was our birthday. Well, the second day. <laughs> the second day was our birthday. First full day. We were very <laughs> sore. We're like, oh my gosh, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You guys arrived with some very talented players. You've touched on this. Uh, Atlanta Fishback, Deja Trojan. They were also four-year members during that run with you guys. But year one, freshman seasons, a record of 44-4, and four, a perfect 12-0 and 0 in Gulf South Conference play, winning the Gulf South Conference championship that first season. How special was that? I felt like the whole season was just kind of magical because we were not expected to be good. Um, so really – Every game we went into, when we started, I think, I can't remember, we lost one relatively early, but I just remember thinking, we always have a chance to win. I mean, so, it, I mean, as we got, kept going and kept going and we started really getting a lot of wins, um, it was really fun. We, it was, it was, like I said, I, feel, I felt like it was kind of magical. I felt like we could do no wrong. <laughs> And Rhonda, for you, that first year, you were named Gold South Conference East Division Freshman of the Year. That first year for you, what are some of the takeaways? Um, well, I, I, there's no question. Matt and Jeff made me a much more consistent player than I ever was in high school. Um, they really, you know, like I said, when we're doing these three-a-days, a lot of it was just doing one after another of things just to make sure that we were getting, doing it right. And like I said, we were in very good shape. And I, I will say that I, I loved Jenny Driscoll's sets, who <laughs> was the center. She was a freshman center that year. Um, not that I didn't love Mayor's sets the next couple of years, but I, I, I will say that I connected with her very nicely. <laughs> so it was fun. <laughs> so freshmen to sophomore years, again, you guys repeat as Gold South Conference champions. And Rhonda, this time you're Gold South Conference co-player of the year in the East Division. Year number two, repeating, what kind of thrill was that? It was awesome. I, again, I, I do think there was a little bit more of a um, – we were expected to win that year, which was good. Um, we had some new freshmen. Gretchen and Amy were on the team, and it was just a lot of fun. Everything just became more fun, I think. Um, it was still – there was a lot of expectations, like I said, but it was nice to know that we should win. You know, it was kind of, it was fun to go into places knowing that we were the team that should be beat or that they, that they wanted to be. And it was, it was fun. And Rachel, any memories from you from that second season? Uh, so that's when Mayor came, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, and I, my freshman year, I didn't start every game um, or, you know, I was at the beginning of the season, um, I was, 
I was playing, but not, you know, regularly. And towards the end of the year was when I started playing more frequently. And so sophomore year for me was kind of that aha moment, I think, with, again, uh, so Mayor came in and her back sets were amazing. And um, again, Jennings were great too, but but timing wise with, with Mayor, we just clicked. Um, and so, um, you know, that was, that was a, a blast being able to feel pretty confident, you know, whenever I got set that I could get a kill if I, you know, in the right situation. Um, and, and um, it was, it was nice to, you know, know what I was doing a little bit more than freshman year. Cause you know, freshman year, you're starting off new in college, you're starting off new in volleyball, everything's brand new. Um, and so I had a little bit more background on, um, you know, kind of what I would expect from UNA and with my friends and with my family and all that stuff. So it was, it was a good year. Now, at one point, these great teams that you guys were on rolled off 31 straight home court wins inside of Flowers Hall. What do you guys remember most about those home games in Flowers Hall and the hometown crowd? I remember Enos. <laughs> I guess you were just thinking, uh, which is just one of the fans. He, he was there every single game, which is awesome. <laughs> he actually had a, he had a very large group of people, and they were, they were loud. Uh, I, it was it was fun that year because there was there was definitely more, I think, student involvement that second year than in the first. Maybe I don't know if it's because we made more friends, you know, being, um, you know, since everybody wasn't quite as new that year. Um, <clears throat> but even the community, there was a lot of you know community involvement, like um, that you know just adult. It's funny thinking adults; they were probably younger than I am now, but <laughs> they came in and. <laughs> Go watch the games too. And it was a lot of. It was just really cool to have you know more people there. It was fun. I guess one thing I remember, unrelated to um, you know to timing, is it was very nice that our gym was air conditioned because not every gym that we went to was air conditioned, and our high school gym wasn't. I mean, in Alabama, it was much more critical that it was, <laughs> that it was air conditioned because it was so hot, so much hotter than here anyway. <laughs> Um, but I do remember that and that <laughs> whenever we went anywhere else, it seemed like, uh, you know, where they didn't have that, it seemed like it, it, was, it was a bit rough. <laughs> so also your junior and senior years saw the teams advance to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament as well. So you won the Gulf South Conference Championship all four years. Those last two years, though, taking that next step to really a national prominent program, what was that like? It was kind of like a, a dream. I, I will say we had never come out of regionals in high school, which was kind of frustrating. And they call it regionals, the, um, you know, the Sweet 16, which we had made it the first two years. Um, but when we made it to the Elite Eight, I was like, oh, finally we've made it. <laughs> and every year, the first, or at least the first three years, we actually beat the person who won the national championship in the regular season, but lost to them in the tournament, which was a little frustrating, but cool to know that we we had the potential to do it so and also those last two years it became a family affair for the price family with your sister erin joining the team as well you and a and your family just what did it evolve to over the years so i mean our family's great um my mom is hilarious my dad is uh, you know, he's always been super supportive about every sporting event. I, I mean, if he could make it, he drove from Indiana. I mean, it's, it's like a, I don't know, eight to 10 hour drive, depending on um, traffic and different ways you can go. And he would, he would make it down for a lot of our, um, a lot of our games, um, especially if they were at home. Um, and so it's, when Erin came, it just made it that much more special. She's, um, She's not nearly as tall as us, but she's a little firecracker and she was awesome to have on the team. She's just, she's hilarious and um, fun to be around and just, you know, helps bring spirit, the spirit up. Um, so it was, it was great. It's, it's been great. <laughs> Now, the accolades that you guys racked up over your time at UNA, it's too many for me to list, but a couple of them I want to go over. You both won the Gulf South Conference Commissioner's Trophy, and you won it in consecutive years, three straight years, one of you won it. 
On top of that, you're each named UNA Female Athlete of the Year. You throw in a bunch of the other honors, academic All-American, academic for the, the playing side of it, all Gold South Conference. What was it like watching each other rack up those awards and sharing those experiences? It was always fun. I mean, it was always fun to get an award, but it's always fun when anybody on your team gets an award. You know, you're really just happy for them. And, I mean, you only get awards, people only get awards if their team does well. So, honestly, we, everybody was such, it was fun to play with such good players all around. Um, and I think everybody brought so much, you know, to improve everybody else. Um, and, it, you know, it's just one of those things that you, it's just, really cool to be in that like arena. Yeah, and I I I um like Rana said it's it's fun to it's as much fun to have somebody else that you know, you know, get one of those awards as as yourself. And so um, you know, when we got the awards together, it was kind of doubly special in that way. Plus then you had somebody to travel with and hang out with at wherever the you know, location is that you're getting it. Yeah, I, I do remember going once when she got the commissioner's trophy and I was like, this is, it was actually really cool to be on that side of it. So, <laughs> plus it was really cool to be part of a team where I knew if Mayor got Rachel no block that it would be a kill. It was, it was just fun. <laughs> Mayor did a great job. We had some great passers, great defenders and everybody in the middle. I mean, we just had some great hitters. It was fun. <laughs> so you guys wrap up the outstanding playing careers at UNA, but the honors don't stop there. And you were each awarded NCAA postgraduate scholarships. Rachel, you go to Purdue. Rhonda, you went to Indiana. What was it like for you guys breaking up the band after going through so many of those life experiences together? Well, interestingly, we did not pick up the band immediately. <laughs> yeah. I went to IU School of Medicine, but it actually has – many satellite campuses and this was not on purpose but my first two years of medical school were actually at Purdue so we lived together for another two years <laughs> yeah and she actually she actually is still really good friends with all my med school friends we go go out every year like go on vacation and she's part of that family so I inserted myself <laughs> Rachel, I want to jump to 2017 with you. You were inducted into the COSIDA Academic American, All-American Hall of Fame. Dick Emberg played a large part of that. Reese Davis as well. Take us back to, to what that was like for you. So that had been the first time in a while that Rhonda actually wasn't able to attend it. Even. Um, so that was a, a little bit sad going into it, but I did have, I had my parents there. I had Brian's parents there. I had my family, my husband, Brian, and my daughter, Leah, and my son, Cole. They were all there. It was, it was really a, a, a neat experience, um, not just because it was such a big honor to, to, to get that, um, but also because the other people who were getting the award were like amazing. So for instance, like Stephanie White, um, she actually played basketball near us in, in Indiana and she went to Purdue and played um, for several years. And so, um, you know, had looked up to her and heard about her for years, you know, since I had been in high school. And um, so to be inducted at the same time as her was amazing. Um, I think Heather O'Reilly was also inducted at that time and she won the Olympics at some point. So, you know, and all, you know, they've all done amazing things. Um, so it was, it was just really, it was a great experience. Um, and I felt really honored to be among those, you know, that really uh, great group of people um, and to meet Dickenberg and, and Reese and, um, you know, I was a little nervous not having Rhonda there, but it was great. <laughs> Rhonda, I want to go over to you. And to this day, you still rank second in Gold South Conference history in career kills. You're the UNA's all-time leader with 2,550. And all these years later, what's it like to sort of still be on the top of the leaderboard? I actually, I didn't know I was still on top. So that's, <laughs> that's actually very flattering. <laughs> um, something for my husband to brag about, because I have been telling him that I'm not still on top. <laughs> so that's, that's exciting. Um, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> So as we wrap this up, two of UNA's most decorated players of all time, just your last thoughts on what your time at UNA was like and what it all means to you. 
So U and A for me, um, it's been it's been a while now. So I've got a perspective, right, a different perspective than I did at the time. But um, it, it was it was a great place to build, um, you know, to to really kind of find out what I was like as a person outside of, you know you know, the home that I had always known with my parents and, uh, you know, to be, go out as an individual, well, an individual, since I had Rhonda with me still, <laughs> I still got to bring a part of my family with me. Um, uh, so it was neat in that way. Um, and I just feel really blessed to have gotten a good education, um, a really good foundation that took me, um, you know, far into my, you know, made it uh, easy to move into my graduate program. Um, and also to be able to keep doing what I loved in terms of um, sports, which was volleyball. So it was, it was a really good experience and um, really enjoyed myself. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I think really it's just, uh, you know, a very good place really to grow. Um, and even, you know, now in our lives, I get, I, it's, I'm still proud of it. And I, I love going back and, and, you know, seeing all the changes that have happened since we've been there um, and just how amazing, and I think everybody cares there. Uh, the teachers cared, which was a big part. Um, I think just because of the smaller classes and things like that, I think he actually, you know, I actually knew all my professors, which was really a lot different than several of my colleagues ever had. And, you know, you got to be on a team with some really impressive people who, grew up to be even more impressive people. And it's been one of those things that I, I can't imagine what my life would be like if I hadn't been there. And I think volleyball was a big part of that. I think all of our teammates, I think my family, um, but it is kind of wonderful that all of those things kind of mixed together and it's made me into the person I am today, which I appreciate. <laughs> Now, planning careers at UNA, I know UNA fans have always appreciated you guys. Thank you guys for taking this stroll down memory lane with us. Thank you. Thank you.